Hello again, welcome back to the Interaction System tutorial. In the second part, our goal will be to set up the collisions so an event is generated when the box we put around our character overlaps with other actors, and then we call the interact with me function from within our character so we can test the interaction. If you missed part one, I'll leave a card now so you can go watch it. And here's a glimpse of what's to come. Let's go. To set up collisions, the first thing we want to do is go to the project settings from the edit menu and look for the collision stuff. Here we want to create a new object channel which will allow us to level parts of an actor as interactive objects from the point of view of the physics engine. So add a new object channel and name it interactive object. Then set the default behavior to ignore. Next, we have to level the mesh that represents our light switch as an interactive object. So open its blueprint and select the cube mesh. Go to the collision section and set the collision preset to custom. Here is where we level our mesh as interactive object. The channel we just created in the object type tab. As for the collision responses, set it to block everything. Next, let's set up the collisions for our character box. Open your character's blueprint and select the box. Then go once again into the collision section and change the collision preset to custom. As for the collision responses, make it ignore everything except for interactive objects, which we have to overlap instead. That way, events will be triggered only when the box overlaps with such objects. Next, we have to modify the code of our character once again. Remember the function we created in the first part called onboxBeginOverlap? Here is when it becomes relevant, because it will allow us to call the interactWithMe function. As you can see, this onboxBeginOverlap conveniently has a variable called otherActor, which is the actor that is overlapping with our box. This is obviously an actor type of variable. However, recall that the interaction functionality exists in the interaction interface class. This interface can be attached to any actor, but not every actor has it attached. This is why we have to check whether the overlapping actor has this interface, and to do so we'll do a cast. If you don't know, a cast allows us to convert a type of variable into another, should all the conditions be met. In other words, what we want to do is check if we can convert the A actor class into an interaction interface class and if we can, then we know this is an interactive object and we can call the interaction functionality. So let's create a member variable in our character in the private section of the type I interaction interface called interface and initialize it to a null pointer. Next, in the onbox begin overlap function, we'll do a cast to the I interaction interface class and apply it to the other actor variable. If the cast is successful, the interface variable will cease to be a null pointer. So we'll check whether it's still a null pointer by using an if statement and call the interact with me function. The if check is to prevent potential crashes when trying to call a function from a null pointer. With all these changes, we can finally compile our code and drag a light switch into the scene. Hit play and as you can see, when we walk towards the light, it turns on. We can also check the log and find the text we wanted to show is here. However, you can see there are some problems with the way things are right now. First of all, there is no way to turn the light off and there is no input required to turn it on. Secondly, and more importantly, this system is designed to work with one object at a time. So if there happen to be more objects within our box, the behavior will be buggy. Let's fix the input problem first. Go into the project settings once more and under the input tab add a new action mapping. We'll call it you guessed it interact and bound it to the E key. Then inside your character implementation file, let's find the action in the setup player input component function. Let's call a function named 
on Interact. Then go back into the header file and we must create the declaration for set function. Next, create the implementation and here's where we want to call Interact with me, making use of the interface member variable. Notice, however, that nothing is preventing the player from pressing E at any point in time, and if the interface variable is still a null pointer, our game will crash. That's why we must check if the interface is not a null pointer. Finally, delete the call we make to interact with me from within Unbox Begin Collision, so the interaction is not performed automatically. Compile your code. Open your light switch code because we'll modify it next. In order to toggle it, we need a variable to keep track of its current state. So in the private section, add a new boolean variable and call it B is on. And set it to false because the light starts turned off. Then we must modify interact with me to take this variable into account. An if else statement will do the trick. If this variable is true, then we want to turn the light off, so set the intensity to zero. Don't forget to update the value of B is on. The other case is the opposite, so set the intensity of the light to 10,000. And don't forget once again to update the value of B is on. If you compile your code once again and hit the play button, you will see that you can turn the light on and off by pressing the E key whenever you are close to it. So we're finally getting there and I know, I know, I told you that an interaction widget would show up whenever we were close to one of these objects and I also told you that we would be able to choose from a group of them. So let us begin by creating the interaction widget. So this is where the interface starts to show its true power because we will create two new generic functions that will allow us to show or hide the interaction widget. And it won't matter if you are interacting with people, a car, a health, back an elevator, whatever it is, they will be able to have their own widget and show it or hide it when it is required. So once again, go into the interaction interface code and in the public section, create two new methods that will call show interaction widget and hide interaction widget. Go into the implementation file next and once again, create the implementation of each method and we leave it just as before, completely empty so each child can create their own implementation of these functions. With that out of the way, Go into the light switch code and create a new component in the private section, which will be a pointer to a U widget component and we'll call it interaction widget. Don't forget to hash include the component slash widget component. Now we will go into the UE4 documentation because there's something important I need to show you. So as you can see here, we have already included the, the correct header file. But I want you to notice that the module this widget is in is the UMG model. So if you don't know, the engine is built up of different models and not all of them are included by default. So if you were to compile your code as it is right now, you will get a linker error, which means the compiler knows the widget component exists, but doesn't actually know where to find it. So to solve this issue, we have to go into your projects folder and click on the source folder, then click on the folder that has your project's name, and then you will find a file which ends in .build.cs. Open that file and you will find a line which says public dependency module names .alrange. And there you can see the list of all the models that are included right now. So we need to add the UMG model next. So put a comma and type UMG under quotation marks. That should solve the compiler errors, but go ahead and compile your code just to be sure. So after this, you already know the drill. Go back into your light switch code and in the constructor, initialize your widget component using the 
create defaults of object function and attach it to the root component using setup attachment. Compile your code once again and we'll create the widget in the blueprint editor. Okay, so open your light switch blueprint and on the left hand side select the interaction widget component we just created. Then go into the user interface section and under widget class click on the plus icon to create a new blueprint which we will call interaction widget. This will open a new editor where we can design our widget. So drag and drop and text box and the text will be just an E because that's the button we use to interact and just modify the font so the text is bigger and it is centered. For a color we use a light blue such as this one and that should be good enough so compile and save it. Back in the light switch blueprint you can see that the text is too big and it is backwards so scale it so it, it is the right size and then on the y and x axis scale it by a negative number so it shows up on the front next go into user interface space and change it from word to screen this option will render the widget on top of other objects and parallel to our screens just as in the new automata example if you hit play now you will see that our widget is there but it's visible always and that's not very useful at all to fix this inside the lightswitch.cpp constructor, set the visibility as false for the interaction widget. And next we want to create the implementations of show interaction widget and hide interaction widget. So once again in the public section of the header file, type virtual void show interaction widget override and virtual void hide interaction widget override. Inside the show interaction widget, we want to set the visibility to true and inside hide interaction widget to false. Now we want to show the widget when we are close and hide it when we are far away. All of this, remember, is dictated by the box we put around the product. So go back into your character.cpp file and inside on box begin overlap. We will call the show interaction widget from the interface member variable. Remember, the if check is to avoid calling a function from a null pointer. Anyway, now we need a way to hide the widget once we get away from it. And a beautiful way to do so is by checking when the overlap ends. So we'll do the same as we did for the begin overlap event. Inside begin play, call the interaction box and then use the on component and overlap dot add dynamic and this time let's create a function called on box and overlap back into the header file declare this new function using the u function macro once again this function has a predefined set of arguments so i'll scroll slowly so you can copy them Once again, create implementation and inside the function, check if the interface is not a non pointer and if it's not, hide the interaction widget. And this time we'll set the interface to a null pointer because we know the object is not within reach anymore. Compile and hit play once again and you can see the widget is there. However, there's something funky going on here because as you saw the widget is showing up at the beginning of the game and it shouldn't but i think i know how to fix it let's go back into the code and instead of setting the visibility inside the constructor let's change it inside the begin play function this should fix the problem so once again compile and hit play and as you can see it works beautifully the widget is there it shows and hides whenever we're near or far away and with that said, we've reached the end of this second part. Unfortunately, I have bad news for you. The system we have in place right now will not support multiple objects within our box. And I'll show you right now. 
let me add a couple more of these light switches and you will see that the widgets are doing whatever i don't know so our code will need heavy modifications but that's a story for another day on the next part we'll modify our code so we can support all the features that are missing which is choosing the closest object from a group of interactive objects and correctly displaying the interaction widget so if you are excited for the next part be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell and once again if you found any useful information in this video give it a like and share it thank you very much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one